It's a new year in Walt Disney World, so you know what that means. It's time for your 2024 Disney Genie Guide. Hello, man fam. It's a whole new year, which means we've got a brand new 2024 Genie Guide coming for you. This year, shooting it in Disney's Hollywood Studios. Last year, I did Magic Kingdom. I would say absolutely these are the parks that need Genie Plus the most, so thought I'd mix it up. We're going to have a great day in Hollywood, but first, we're going to discuss the basics of Genie Plus. And then along the way today, I'll be sharing some of my best tips and tricks so that you get the most out of the service because it is incredibly complicated, but it can be incredibly helpful on your Disney trips. First of all, what is Disney Genie? Well, there are three different parts of Disney Genie. There is free Disney Genie, which is the portion of the app that allows you access to things like the tip board for the wait times, the dining tip board, predicted wait times, personalized itineraries, and more. Then there's Genie Plus, which is the paid replacement of FastPass Plus, which allows you to skip the line at over 40 different attractions across all four parks. And then there are what I call fancy rides, what Disney originally called individual Lightning Lane a la carte selections. These are attractions that also offer an expedited queue. However, it's not part of Genie Plus. These are typically the newest or most popular attractions in the park, and you can skip the line, but it's gonna cost you a per person, per ride fee to do so. The fancy rides across the four parks are here at Hollywood Studios. It's Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. At Epcot, it's Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. At Animal Kingdom, it's Avatar Flight of Passage. And at Magic Kingdom, they've got two. They've got Tron Light Cycle Run and Seven Doors Mine Train. Note that with fancy rides, you can only book two per person per day. Even if you're park hopping, you cannot book more than two. We'll get a little bit more into fancy rides in a little bit because we are headed to do one, spoiler alert. But for now, let's talk about Genie Plus and let's talk about that price. This has been one of the most controversial things about Genie Plus because when it first rolled out, it was $15 per person per day. It did not matter what park you were going to, what day you were going, how many parks you were going to. Then they introduced date-based pricing, which means it'd be less expensive for a random Wednesday in January, but very expensive the week of Christmas. And then they introduced park-based pricing, which means if you're going to Animal Kingdom, it's less expensive than if you're going to Magic Kingdom, or if you want the park hopper option, it's the whatever park is the most expensive, which is always Magic Kingdom. Over this past holiday season, we saw Genie Plus at record highs with it being $39 per person at Magic Kingdom or for that park hopper option. Also somewhat new is the fact that Genie Plus can sell out. It doesn't necessarily sell out across property, but over the holidays, many, many times, at least one, if not multiple parks sell out. And if one park sells out, that means the park hopper option sells out too. So if Magic Kingdom sells out, the park hopper option off the table. Even if you only wanted to park hop between Epcot and Hollywood Studios, it does not matter. Which leads me to my first tip. Make sure if you're interested in purchasing Genie Plus that you do it as early as you possibly can because some people think, oh, I'll just wait and see how busy the park is and I'll buy it when I get there. That quite literally might not be an option. And if you do that, you're not using the system very well and you're wasting money. So when can you buy Genie Plus and how does it work? You can buy Genie Plus day of starting at midnight that day. So I could buy Genie Plus for today starting at midnight. You don't have to stay up and buy it at midnight, but that's as early as you can buy it. When you should have it purchased by though is when you can make your first ride selection. Anyone can book their first Genie Plus selection starting at 7 a.m. Fancy rides are a little bit different. Fancy rides, Disney World Resort guests can purchase them starting at 7 a.m. Non-Disney World Resort guests can start purchasing them at the time that park opens. For example, I wanted to ride the Resistance Lightning Lane today. I'm not a Disney World Resort guest. I could not buy it till 9 a.m. because that's when Disney's Hollywood Studios open to the general public. Note, you do not have to purchase Genie Plus to buy fancy rides and you don't have to buy fancy rides to purchase Genie Plus. The two systems function completely separately. So here's my next pro tip, particularly for Genie Plus, make sure you are up and Adam ready to book your first Genie Plus at 7 a.m. In order to maximize your purchase, in order to maximize the cost of Genie Plus, you want to use the product on as many heavy hitter attractions as you can, so you need to be booking them as soon as possible. As a side note for 7 a.m., you may also know that certain attractions offer a virtual queue, and the only way to ride those attractions is by either purchasing a fancy ride or by getting a spot in the virtual queue. Those attractions are Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at Epcot and Tron Light Cycle Run at Magic Kingdom. Those virtual queues open up at 7 a.m. It's so much, like, uh, it's so much, but we're gonna, we're gonna do it and you're gonna nail it and it's gonna be great. So that's now three things that happen at 7 a.m. One, you're gonna do virtual queue. The most amount of people are gonna be trying for virtual queues because it's free. Two, you're gonna do Genie Plus. 
because everybody can book Genie Plus at the same time, resort guest or not. And three, you want to do your fancy ride because if you're a resort guest, it's a less amount of people going for that fancy ride. And if you're not a resort guest, well, then you're not booking at 7 a.m. anyway. Best case scenario though, have somebody else up as well. Make sure everybody's linked up on My Disney Experience and you could have one person booking one thing and somebody else booking another and theoretically a third person booking a third. I've never tried it where everyone's logged into the same account, but Alan and I have tried it where he books a fancy ride and I book Genie Plus, no problem. Couple more important key factors before we get into a little more of the nitty gritty. One, you're gonna hear me say the words Lightning Lane a lot. Lightning Lane is not a separate thing. Lightning Lane is simply the physical place at the attraction where you're gonna go through the expedited queue. It used to be called the Fast Pass queue. There's the standby queue and there's the Lightning Lane. It is not a different thing. People often get confused because Genie Plus has nothing to do with Lightning Lane and they don't realize it's the same system. Both Genie Plus attractions and Fancy Rides have Lightning Lanes. It's literally just the line you're gonna walk through. So you may hear me say those things interchangeably. Additionally, it's important to understand how Genie Plus functions. Genie Plus functions on a first come first serve basis. You are not gonna be in the app deciding what time you wanna ride the attraction. You are gonna be going when it tells you you are. Anyone remember Fast Pass back when things were simple and you just had to rope drop and then uh, drag your family and like mow down children as you sprint towards Toy Story Mania to get that little paper ticket that might as well have been a chocolate ticket to Wonka's factory. Ah, the good old days. No, for real, I miss paper Fast Pass. But anyway, remember when you got to the Fast Pass machine and you didn't get to decide what time it is, it said, you will be riding Toy Story Mania from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. and you put your ticket in the machine and it spit it out and that's what time you got? That's what Genie Plus is. You're not deciding. The machine is, but now the machine's in your pocket. And because of the first come first serve and nature of Genie Plus, that means attractions can run out of Lightning Lane return times for the entire day. And of course, some attractions are more popular than others, so some attractions are more likely to do that. Which means you should be choosing carefully when you're booking your Lightning Lanes, especially right at 7 a.m. Your top priorities at the different parks based on popularity and how fast their lightning lanes are most likely to run out. At Magic Kingdom, I would go for Jungle Cruise or Peter Pan's Flight. At Epcot, I would decide what's most important to me, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, Frozen Ever After, or Test Track. All three of those run out pretty quick, but I'd probably give the edge to Remy's. Here at Hollywood Studios, I would go for Slinky Dog Dash. And at Disney's Animal Kingdom, I would go for Navi River Journey, which surprises a lot of people because it's not a lot of people's favorite, but it does tend to run out of lightning lanes pretty quickly. If you have no interest in riding Navi River Journey, then I would go for Kilimanjaro Safaris. So this morning, bright and early, 7 a.m., I woke up and I booked Slinky Dog Dash. Okay, last thing I'm going to talk about before we actually get in there and start riding some rides, and then I'll talk about some more best practices and, and things to do. Typically, you can only hold one Genie Plus Lightning Lane at a time. This does not count fancy rides. You can have your two fancy rides and one Genie Plus Lightning Lane, but there is a loophole to that because you can book your next Genie Plus Lightning Lane either one, once you've used it, B, if it expires for some reason, or C, did I do one B, C? Three C, I think I've done that before. Why is that so hard for me? Not important. Or final reason, if it's been 120 minutes since you booked it. Disney doesn't want you to book something at 7 a.m. or at some point throughout the day and it be for hours and hours away and then you're not being able to use the service. So because of that, there's something called the 120 minute rule, which again means if you book a lightning lane that's several hours out, you can book another one 120 minutes after you booked that first one. Now there's a caveat within this caveat and that's that the 120 minute rule doesn't kick off until the park officially opens to all guests. So even though I booked Slinky Dog Dash at 7 a.m. and I got an initial return time of 11.50, I couldn't actually book another Genie Plus Lightning Lane until two hours after the park officially opened, which is 9 a.m., which means 11 a.m. Confused yet? So theoretically, if you wanna come into the park in the afternoon evening, you can do something that is often referred to as stacking, which is where you book a new attraction every 120 minutes and then you come into the park later in the day and you've got a nice stack of lightning lanes all ready to go. It's actually one of my favorite ways to use the system. I think it is a very efficient way to use the system. I think it's much more relaxing because you could have a nice pool day, maybe it's your check-in day, maybe you go to Disney Springs, maybe you have a resort day, maybe you start your day at a park that doesn't have a ton of Lightning Lane attractions like Animal Kingdom, but you're hopping into Magic Kingdom or Studios. I love stacking. I have done several videos where 
where I stack my afternoon, especially at Epcot or Magic Kingdom or here. Not really plausible or needed at Animal Kingdom, but I think stacking is one of the best ways to use the system. I know the 120 minute rule can be very confusing, but once you get the hang of it, stacking is awesome. And Disney did add something that made it a lot easier. Before you kind of just had to remember when you could book your next one or possibly write it down, or there's a very like specific way to check it in the app. Now at the top of the tip board, it says, when you can book your next one in a big bold bar so you don't have to remember anymore and as a pro tip set an alarm for like a minute before that so that way you're always ready to book another one and that's precisely what i did when i got up 7 a.m i booked slinky dog dash 9 a.m rise of the resistance 11 a.m because that 120 minute rule i was able to book tower of terror and then at 1 p.m i was able to book mickey and minnie's runaway railway so i'm coming into the park with four attractions already lined up and i'll be able to book a fifth here in a second Whew. Well, that was a ton of information. Let's go actually ride a ride. I promise again, I'll give you more tips and tricks on how to best use things. We'll talk about fiddle faddling. We'll talk about it all throughout the video today, but I think we need to hit the tower tear. Don't worry, I understand not everybody wants to come into the park later. Some people want to rope drop, some people want to get to the parks earlier. We'll talk about it then too, but just make sure you understand the 120 minute rule because it's very important when it comes to using Genie Plus the most efficient way possible. Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, a fan favorite since it opened up in the mid 90s. This is the attraction that's gonna drop you 199 feet as you explore the Hollywood Tower Hotel and the mystery that happened here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Tower of Terror is a great use of a lightning lane because it's incredibly popular. It's not even super duper busy today because the marathon was yesterday, so there's a lot of people still here that ran that. Congrats to you. And uh, it still has a 65 minute wait. And if it wasn't popular enough on its own rock and roller coaster, its neighbor on Sunset Boulevard, another very popular thrill ride, is currently closed through refurbishment for several months. So typically if a big attraction is closed for refurbishment, all the other heavy hitters just get busier because all those people have to go somewhere. But this attraction is incredibly detailed. The queue is one of my favorite parts. Time has literally stood still from 1939 when this tower was struck by lightning. It's one of the Imagineering's best. If you want a lot of fun details and cool things to look for, I did a secret series where I pointed out a bunch of, of Easter eggs from the Twilight Zone TV show, as well as some of the really cool things to look at in the queue and the pre-show and such. So recommend that if you're into that kind of thing, because this is seriously one of the best queues and detailed attractions of all time. My dreams are coming true. Something so cool is happening. Y'all, I know it's dark, so I hope you can see me, but the coolest thing ever just happened. I'm geeking out. Um, I was videoing the take the stairs detail on the directory because if you look, there's letters that have fallen that say take the stairs. And I think that's like such a cool Easter egg. And this cast member came over and she's like, have you ever turned the lobby before? And I was like, what now? And she let me in behind the ropes into the lobby. I was not to take video and she let me take a bunch of pictures and she told me all these cool fun facts and little details in the lobby. And her name is Alexa. And Alexa, if you see this, you're amazing. I sent in a cast compliment for you. It was so cool and I'm nerding out. And and what a magical moment. Okay, well, obviously that was the best ride on tower ever. And now I've acquired my beloved Shaky Jamaiki and we're taking a detour from this Genie Plus adventure so I can tell you some of the cool stuff in the lobby that I was just learned. Cause you know, I'm a nerd and I gotta, I gotta take pictures of all the Easter eggs. For starters, I've always talked about the lover's table, which is where the couple on their honeymoon was sitting and that you can see lipstick on her glass. But now I have proof, really good proof that you can see it. Also, Alexa showed me that the gentleman's napkin on the table was like just thrown on there and the ladies is all folded nicely, which is kind of fun. Also the ice bucket that the couple's champagne bottle is in, it used to be owned by Swifty Lazar, like in real life, who was a famous talent agent for many stars in the golden age, including Truman Capote, Cher, Cary Grant, 
Ernest Hemingway, Madonna, President Nixon, like a bunch of people if you look them up. Also, Alexa told me that everything in that lobby, unless Disney made it, is from 1939 when the strike happens, when the lightning strike happens, or earlier because they wanted to keep time authentic. So a lot of what you're seeing are actual antiques from the 1930s or earlier. She pointed out these two chairs that are in either side of the fireplace that were from a um, like a members only club in Hollywood, one of the oldest members only club in Hollywood. They're over 100 years old, those chairs. Also, the luggage that's outside the bell, uh, the guest services desk, that gator skin luggage, real gator skin luggage, is the luggage that was used in the pre-show and that's the family that disappears their luggage. So that actual luggage was shot in the pre-show and then put into the lobby. Also, the Mickey in the pre-show that the little girl is holding, uh, she told me that was a real Mickey from the 1930s and that the actress got to keep it. Let's see what else. Um, uh, the Mahjong table, Imagineer Ken Gomes played himself uh, from four different seats in Mahjong, so he kind of like sat in one, would play, sat in the other and played it, so it's a real Mahjong game, Frozen in Time, which immediately makes me think of the chess game Frozen in Time over at Pirates of the Caribbean by my favorite Imagineer, Mark Davis. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to remember, I was writing stuff down so quickly, I was typing on a little notepad. Um, all the chandeliers are from a 1930s movie palace, AKA a fancy movie theater in Washington state. Also, you might've noticed there's a 13 diamond award on the wall from AAA, which is a play on AAA giving out diamond awards to hotels in real life, one to five diamonds, five being the best. That might look like a prop Disney made, but no, literally AAA made that and gave it to Tower of Terror, which is hilarious. Oh, and every clock in the Tower Hotel is set to 8.05, which is when the lightning strike struck the tower. So all the clocks are frozen in time. And if you add eight plus five, you get 13. Oh, that was literally so cool. Like I'm about to start crying. Cause like that was such a, awesomely cool magic moment. Alexa, again, thank you. That was so awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed some of the pictures and learning more of the details and just like cast members are the best and we love cast members and let's keep going and talk about GD, I guess. All right, headed now to Toy Story Land and Slinky Dog Dash because it's time for that return time. Also, it's starting to spit a little bit, like rain just a little bit, which is a good segue for me to explain what happens if an attraction you have a lightning lane for closes for weather or technical downtime. If that is the case where an attraction that you have a lightning lane for, but during the time you're supposed to ride it, it's closed. Again, weather is very common with outdoor attractions, technical difficulties. If that happens, the app will take care of everything for you. You don't have to do any Thing. The app will automatically issue you an experience recovery pass. And this pass can be used at that attraction whenever it reopens, whatever time that day you want to go, go for it, or a variety of other attractions at any time during that day. Now, a couple things to note. It's only gonna work at the park you're in. So if Slinky Dog Dash goes down, I can't go use it at Big Thunder Mountain Railroad in Magic Kingdom. And it's not gonna work at every attraction. If you have a lightning lane for Star Tours and it goes down, you're not gonna be able to go ride Rise of the Resistance. So make sure you look at it. You can click on it and it will say, find out where it works and it'll give you a list of all the attractions it works at. But that's an automatic recovery in case that happens. But most importantly, if this happens to you, go book another Genie Plus lightning lane. The experience recovery pass is a different thing. As Alan once said, it sits at a different lunch table. It is not the same as a Genie Plus Lightning Lane. It's not the same thing as a fancy ride. So go book another Genie Plus Lightning Lane if you're able to. Make sure to check that tip board, but don't hang on to that one thinking that's your Lightning Lane because you can probably book another one. Now I'm gonna talk about another important thing, another one of my best tips that I don't think enough people do when it comes to Genie Plus, and that's pinning your favorites to the top of the tip board so you don't have to scroll all the way down to find them, which is definitely a time saver, especially at 7 a.m. when you're rushing to get that vital Slinky Dog Dash Lightning Lane. The way you're gonna do this is in the app under My Disney Genie Day. The Genie is gonna to offer to plan your day and you're gonna select Get Started. It's gonna ask you which day you're planning for, it's gonna ask you which park you're planning for, it's gonna ask you which people you're going with, and then it's gonna ask you to pick your favorites in that park. So select all the attractions that you're interested in riding, and those attractions are gonna be pinned to the top of your tip board. And once you've set that up, you can edit your selections on the tip board. So what I like to do is after I've done an attraction or after I've booked an attraction, I like to remove it from my pinned attractions. So that way when I'm looking at the tip board to- Hey, hey. Boy, am I glad to see you. 
Thank you, Woody. So that way, whatever attractions I'm looking for on the tip board to book next are at the top of the tip board, and I don't have to worry about scrolling all the way down, which can save you important seconds first thing in the morning if you're trying to book Slinky Dog Dash. Only pin Slinky Dog Dash, or only pin one or two things at the top, so that way right at 7 a.m., you can refresh the tip board and click Slinky Dog right away. Now, we have a little bit more to walk before we get on Slinky Dog, so let's talk about one of my favorite features of Genie Plus. This was a later edition, and it's the Modify button. When Genie Plus first rolled out, once you booked a Lightning Lane, you were locked into that Lightning Lane, and even if a better time popped up or you changed your mind, you had to go in and cancel that attraction and try and rebook the next attraction or the other time, and oftentimes it was gone by the time you did all that. It was a real pain in the alien swirling saucers, if you know what I mean. But now, there is a handy day. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Rex. You're doing great. Ugh. Buzz, tell him he's the sweetest space toy I ever did meet. Oh, I'll definitely tell him, Jesse. Tell him you're the worst. Anyway, the modify feature is awesome. And it only helps with one of my number one pro tips of Genie Plus, which is to always have one booked. The minute you tap in at that attraction, or the minute your two hours are up, book your next attraction. Because with the modify feature, if it's not exactly what you want, you can modify it. Basically, once you've booked a lightning lane, you can click the three dots, you click modify, and then it's gonna bring up a screen where you can either modify that attraction to a different time. Again, next available, you're not choosing from all the times, but a new next available time might be up, or you can change it to another attraction. So you may have noticed from this footage that when I first booked Slinky Dog Dash this morning, it was in the 11 o'clock hour. I didn't think I was gonna be here that early, so I went and modified it, and then I waited until the time set a four o'clock hour. This is especially helpful if you get distracted or something pops up, something takes longer than you think it will, you can modify it to a later time usually, or a different attraction. Maybe you get to an attraction and Slinky Dog, instead of displaying 145 minute wait like it does right now, says 30 minutes and you're like, well, I don't wanna waste a lightning lane here for only 30 minutes. You could modify it to a different attraction depending what's available in that park. So the modify function is incredibly helpful. It's also incredibly helpful when you're stacking because oftentimes when you're booking that every two hours, it may not be as late as you want it. Go ahead and book it anyway and then keep checking back and modifying it until it's a time that works for you. Now, Slinky Dog definitely had a downtime earlier today, which is why this lightning lane is as long as it is, but I assure you it's still much, much faster than that 145 minute post away time, which is my very convenient reminder that lightning lane doesn't mean walk on, it just means significantly faster than standby. Slinky Dog Dash has a 38 inch height requirement as demonstrated by this guy right here. What was he from, Candyland? I don't know, but he's adorable. This whole land is so darn cute. Well, phone bonus detail for you, the uh, standby entrance right there, that's on Buster, Andy's dog. It says on his dog tag. You can see uh, Buster and th their street address on the backside. Anyway, Slinky Dog Dash, incredibly popular, as you can tell. It's a little bit more thrilling than, say, a Seven Doors Mine Train, but not quite as thrilling as a Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. And I got to make this joke every time. It has a lot more bark than it looks like. It is whimsical. It is fun. It is especially amazing at night. Definitely a must do. Good kind of like second or third coaster for your little ones. Hello. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Definitely a good like second or third coaster for your little ones as long as they're tall enough. Cute, 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 but very, very popular. Incredibly long lines as you can see. This land in the summertime is very, very hot. Not a ton of shade or air conditioning. So my best advice, book this first on Genie Plus uh, or wait till the evening time when it's a little bit cooler and the line might be a little bit shorter. Plus it's beautiful at night. And that only took 10 minutes and now I'm next to board. just gets me. I get the giggles. It is such a delightful attraction. Now, 
I do have another lightning lane right now for Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway, but I'm a little hungry right now, so seems like as good a time as any to give out one of my favorite Genie Plus, the most important Genie Plus lessons, the art of the fiddle faddle. Fiddle faddle is a phrase I came up with when you refresh the used to be tip board, now modify screen over and over again in hopes of a new time or a new attraction showing up. Now I say it's important to do it on the modify screen now because remember, it's important to always have one book. So as soon as you can book one, even if you don't love the time, even if the attraction you want isn't available, book something else and then go to the modify screen. Then on the modify screen, pull it down over and over again and hopefully a new time or that new attraction will show up. I was doing it in line just to see what else was showing up and Slinky Dog, which I have not seen available in any time for hours, popped up with some new time. So it's a really good way to see if you can get something you weren't able to get earlier or again, move something to a more desirable time. So in this case, I want to move Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway to another time. But when I do that, let's see, I have it where it ends at 535. And if I go to the modify screen, it is showing me 8.30 p.m. That's a little bit late for what I would like to do. So I'm gonna refresh the screen over and over again to see if I can get another time to pop up. Now, I'm not suggesting that you do this for like hours on your vacation, a few minutes here and there, and uh, maybe you can grab something. It usually works out in my favor. I've only had it fail very few times and I love getting messages from you guys being like, I fiddle faddled and I got whatever Frozen or Remy or Jungle Cruise or a better time for this. And I know a lot of you are thinking, Molly, it only works for you because you're one person, but everything I'm telling you, every tip today is the same for one person up to 10 people. Um, I've tested it with more than just me. I've talked to the people that made the system. Everything I'm telling you works the same for up to 10 people. All right, we had 745 pop up. Now, Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway did have a little bit of a downtime earlier today, but I'm hoping to get it in the 6, 6.30 time frame uh, because that's right before I have rise, but that would give me a little time to go grab something to eat. So I sat there for about 90 seconds fiddle faddling, and then I just went ahead and picked one of the later times, an 8.30 time slot. You should note that if you run out of your time slot, you can no longer modify it. You have to rebook a new lighting lane. So now I'm gonna place a mobile order at where I wanna eat and continue fiddle faddling on my way. And I'm, I'm rolling the dice a little bit that this is gonna work out in my favor, but I have that much faith in the fiddle faddle. Made it to ABC Commissary. This is where we're gonna enjoy some dinner. I was inspired to come here because I recently did the Yelp and TripAdvisor Decides video where I used the highest and lowest rated things on travel sites to plan my day. And this was considered one of the lowest ranking restaurants in the park. And I don't think that's fair because they've revamped their menu after COVID closure and it's awesome now. So I wanted to come showcase one of my favorite dishes that I haven't had in a minute and uh, enjoy some sit down while we continue to talk about Genie Plus. ABC Commissary is themed to ABC shows, so you may see props from a show you enjoy, like, oh my gosh, I love Abbott Elementary. They've got the step uniform and Ava's uh, lanyard, that's so cool. This is cool too. I don't. I haven't watched the uh, revamp of the Wonder Years, but it appears they went to Disneyland in an episode, and this is their like Disneyland period piece costume from the Matterhorn and the Mickey ears. That's so cool. Anyway, the menu in here is gonna be a little bit different. They've got some tacos. I like the shrimp tacos. They've got some sandwiches, uh, a California plant-based burger. So it's gonna be a little bit different than like your classic theme park burgers and chicken nuggets, but it's also not as uh, unique as something like Docky Bay seven that you would find over in Galaxy's Edge. So I really like this quick service restaurant. It's huge, it's air conditioned, it's away from the elements, mobile order. It's usually not super busy in here. So I don't think it gets enough credit. Here it is, my buffalo chicken grilled cheese sandwich. It comes with a buffalo dipping sauce. Look at all that ooey gooey cheese. Now it automatically comes with steak fries, but I don't actually love steak fries. I'm more of a classic uh, fast food style fry kind of girly. Um, so I swapped to the salad, which is a plant-based salad that's got farro and arugula um, and some, some nuts in it. And it's a very good little side salad if you want something a little bit lighter. Goodness. As someone who loves both the grilled cheese and buffalo sauce, this is delightful. First of all, the bread is perfect. It is crunchy, it is buttery. They got that nice crisp bite. You know that when people do cooking reels, they go like this. It would work on this sandwich. 
bread is perfect holding up to all of this. It's actually got some heat in the buffalo sauce. So if you're heated verse, this is a no. It's probably like a medium if you were doing buffalo wings, but I love that there's actual heat. I got some ranch to dip it in too. Tons of chicken, tons of cheese, obviously a messy ooey gooey sandwich, but a little bit more unique than some of the food you'd get other places in the park. Um, but, and I think a really just underrated treat. I think this grilled cheese is better than the, than the classic grilled cheese at Woody's Lunchbox. Controversial, I know. And I love Woody's Lunchbox, but this is something. I'm trying the salad now. So on the salad is arugula farro, Brandy Smith apples, dried cranberries, plant-based Parmesan and pecan, and a Dijon vinaigrette. I know, it is delicious. You know I'm not a plant-based eater. You know I love real cheese. The Parmesan isn't really noticeable regardless, um, and I certainly can't tell that it's plant-based. It's really light, but it's a little bit different. I love the texture addition of the apples and the nuts. This is a great, great meal. Update on the fiddle battle after I reviewed my food. I fiddle faddled for a few minutes. Mickey and Minnie's was gone, but I did it for like three minutes and I was able to get one at 7.50, which is obviously not as ideal as like 6.30, which is what I want, um, but still better than 8.30. And now I'm just sitting here refreshing the screen like this to see if another time that's a little bit closer pops up. If not, it still did work out that I got to eat first. It's just maybe that now I go ride Rise, which is my other lightning lane I have booked today, and then end on Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway instead of the other way around. It showed me 8.15, it showed me 8.25, it went away for a little bit. The fiddle faddle, man. I know a lot of people don't like my Disney experience at Genie Plus because you have to be on your phone a lot. 7.40, that's pretty much what I already have. Um, and I can agree with that to an extent. Obviously, way more on your phone than like back in the paper fast fast day when we didn't have smartphones. Um, but I don't actually find myself on my phone much more than when fast fast plus existed because even though you could pre-book three fast passes, if you were maximizing that system, once you use those three, you could book more lightning lanes then and you could fiddle faddle with fast pass plus. So I found myself on my phone a decent amount with that system too. Maybe that's just me, um, but I think that it also often seems like I'm on my phone a lot because you're watching a long video condensed into just the parts of my phone if I'm doing a Genie Plus video. Um, so you're on your phone admittedly more than, you know, an, an old school Disney vacation, but I also think, you know, a few minutes of refreshing your screen while waiting in line for another ride or, you know, sitting or something like that, even mindlessly, like I'm talking to you and I'm still doing it right now, will allow you for a better day and to skip lines. And I would, I know a lot of people are like, I just don't even want to deal with Genie Plus, I'll just wait in lines. If that's your choice, that's great. I, for me, I don't want to wait an hour plus long lines for all the rides I want to do, and this is what I have to do to make sure that doesn't happen. So while I'm happy with how the day is lined up, flip-flopping things around, flexibility is key, I'm going to still fiddle faddle to see if I can get something before my rise time. If I do, great. If not, we still have Mickey Minis running away, we're really locked and loaded, but I'm going to be fiddle faddling over here. But while I do, I'm going to talk to you about the best way to use Genie Plus throughout your day. Number one, no questions asked, the best way to utilize the system is to not only utilize this system. The best way to have a really good full day in Disney World is to use a combination of lightning lanes, fancy rides, and standby. Standby is just when you go through the regular queue. And to maximize that, you wanna know which attractions you actually wanna use Genie Plus on and versus which ones are good, what I call filler attractions, which means nothing about the quality of the attraction. I'm not insulting an attraction by calling it a filler ride. I've had that happen before. Um, I'm just saying they're attractions that don't usually get too long of lines or they are shows that hold a lot of people and they're good things to do in between these lightning lanes. So that way, if you don't wanna spend a lot of time on your phone, you can ride your ride, book your next one. It's probably gonna be an hour or so out. It's very rare that you're gonna book something that's available right then. And then during that hour, do some of your filler attractions that you've got your Rolodex of. So let's talk about what are your kind of top priority attractions at each park and which ones are good filler attractions. At Magic Kingdom, like I said earlier, your first priorities are gonna be Jungle Cruise, Peter Pan's Flight. Also important priorities, Space Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. And then kind of under that, you have things like Meeting Mickey, Meeting the Princesses, Haunted Mansion, maybe Pirates of the Caribbean, although that one isn't always as quick to go as some of the others I've listed. Good filler attractions at Magic Kingdom, AKA attractions you should not use Genie Plus on, even if they offer you a lightning lane, in my opinion. Mad Tea Party, The Barnstormer, Dumbo, Carousel of Progress, Mickey's Philhar Magic, Enchanted Tiki Room, Magic Carpets of Aladdin, People Mover, 
those are all attractions that usually are gonna have like a 15 minute at most queue. So do things like that in between those lightning lights. Over at Epcot, again, your top priorities, your top tier, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, Frozen Ever After, and Test Track. Now, Epcot's kind of weird because it's like those three and then everything else isn't super demanding when it comes to lightning lanes. I would say your next ones are probably Soarin' and Mission Space. But beyond that, you have a lot of really good filler attractions at Epcot because you've got Living with the Land, you've got the Seas with Nemo and Friends, you've got Journey into Imagination with Figment, Grand Fiesta Tour with the Three Caballeros, all of the entertainment in World Showcase. And let's be honest, if you're at Epcot, at least if you're like me, your favorite attraction is eating and drinking, which is the best filler ride of all. So Epcot's a little bit trickier because it's like you've got three heavy hitters that are gonna run out of lightning lanes very quickly and then the rest. This park is also very interesting to use Genie Plus in because there are so many bangers. There are a ton of e-ticket attractions here. Almost every moving vehicle ride is an e-ticket attraction. When I say e-ticket attraction, that refers back to the way tickets used to work when Disneyland and Magic Kingdom originally opened in the 50s and the 70s. You paid park admission and then you had an admission ticket booklet that had A through E attractions, each with a different value. Your A ticket attractions were your like least technologically advanced attractions and your e-ticket attractions were the most expensive in the booklet and that's where your most technologically advanced, most impressive attractions were. Um, so that phrase is kind of stuck around even though A through e-tickets don't really work. But I do think it's funny that a lot of people when Duty Plus rolled out were like, Walt would be rolling in his grave if you charged per ride. And I'm like, well, actually, they did. Ooh, 645, 645, 645. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I hope I don't get got by the genie. 645, boom, the art of the fiddle paddle. Getting got, by the way, is a term that I use when something you want shows up and you click it really fast, but by the time the screen loads where you're gonna confirm, it's either changed time or it's told you that's not available anymore because someone else was faster to that than you were, but we did it, yay. The mastery of the fiddle paddle. And again, I think in total, that was a trickier one because it's towards the end of the day. Mickey Minnie's run away. Everyone had a downtime earlier, which means they're offering less lightning lanes now. But it's so I think in total, I may have been doing that for max 10 minutes. And again, you don't have to do that. You don't have to sit on your phone and, and swipe over and over again. Most people would be happy with just like, oh, I'll have it in an hour and I'll go do some other stuff, which I would be too. That's how I'm telling you to use the system. This was just like an act, a demonstration, if you will. And because I'm stubborn, I want to make sure I always win against the treaty. Anyway, this part can be hard to use Genie Plus in because again, so many bangers exist. On a normal time, rock and roller coaster, again, down for refurbishment until the summer, Tower of Terror, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, Toy Story Mania, Slinky Dog Dash, all of those are on Genie Plus. So my recommendation again, number one top priority, Slinky Dog Dash should be your first choice as your number one here. The next ones, I would say, take your pick between Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster, and then maybe Smuggler's Run after that. Then I would put Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, then Toy Story Mania, and then your filler attractions in this park are majority shows. The exception to that, I would say, is Star Tours. is usually a walk-on. It's been a 10 minute wait for most of the day, even though all the big attractions have had an hour or longer. Other good filler attractions here, you've got Walt Disney Presents, which is the uh, walkthrough show with Walt Disney, where you can like learn a little, not with Walt Disney, like Walt's there, like they did, they unfroze him and they like have him walking around for you. No, for, okay, also disclaimer, I understand Walt's not frozen. That's a urban myth. It's a historical exhibit about Walt Disney. I've got a lot of great shows here, like for the first time forever, a Frozen Sing Along Spectacular. I love that show, very underrated in my opinion. Beauty of the Beast Live on stage, Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular. If you've got little ones, Disney Junior Dance Party. Uh, you've also got Star Wars Launch Bay where you can learn a little bit about Star Wars. They've got some props from the films. They also have Mean Grease in there with Darth Vader and Chewbacca and BB-8. Uh, there's a lot of fun to be had just walking around Galaxy's Edge. You can do the Magic Band Plus activity if you have a Magic Band Plus, the Bounty Hunter, experience or you can play the game with your data pad if you have the play disney parks app um, so a lot of the filler stuff here is going to be more shows and interactive uh, versus actual rides but just keep that in mind and then over at Disney's Animal Kingdom, Genie Plus is probably least necessary there, but on a busy day, you're still gonna save yourself some time. I would, again, number one priority, Navi River Journey, just because that line gets very long because of how low the capacity for that attraction is. Number two for me is Kilimanjaro Safaris. And then things like Dinosaur, Expedition Everest, Vessel of the Lion King is a good one to use it on there. Usually I say shows aren't necessary, but that show is so popular that I recommend lining up at least 30 minutes for the show if you're doing standby. So Genie Plus 
Plus just locks in and makes sure you get a reserved seat for that one. Also the meet and greet with Mickey and Minnie. That one is very, very popular at Animal Kingdom. Great use of a lightning lane because it's the only lightning lane place where you get both of them in one meet and greet. Good filler attractions over at Animal Kingdom. Finding Nemo the Musical, uh, Feathered Friends in Flight, The Bird Show, It's Tough to Be a Bug. Cali River Rapids is a little hit or miss. If it's busy, it's a good lightning lane attraction because if it's hot, people are gonna wanna ride that one. If it's not super, super hot, it usually is 15 minutes or less. The Animal Trails are one of my favorite filler attractions. It's all what Animal Kingdom is all about. Walk through an animal trail in Africa or Asia. Head up to Rafiki's Planet Watch, take the drawing class or pet some goats at the affection section. Animal Kingdom is the most luxuriating and relaxing of all the parks. It's my personal favorite because of that. So there's a lot to do in just walking around and enjoying Animal Kingdom. And of course, in all four of the parks, great filler experiences include meeting characters, eating, snacks, uh, just walking around enjoying the ambiance, things like at Magic Kingdom, the parade, or the show in front of the castle, nighttime spectaculars, that sort of thing. All right, wrapped up my meal and headed to Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. One thing that a lot of people don't mention when it comes to Genie Plus, a little perk, myself included, I often forget to say this, is that there are some other perks besides the expedited ride situation, and that's with Disney Photo Pass. For starters, if you get an on-ride photo when you have Genie Plus, that photo is included. So not like pictures with the characters and things, but on-ride photos here would be Tower Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster, Slinky Dog Dash. Those are included even if you didn't purchase memory maker so make sure you download that those out of the photo section of the app additionally there's these really fun photo pass filters which are their own section of the app just go to the hamburger menu and think like snapchat filters i guess or instagram filters but a little bit more fun and interactive some of them are geotags so you can only open them in certain parks or certain lands and i was just messing with them while i was sitting in the restaurant for like several minutes and laughing at some of the different filters i loved the muppets one didn't care for the ursula one really didn't care for what Goofy looks like in the Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway one, but I was delighted by the Chip and Dale one. So those are super cute and I mean, not a reason enough to buy Genie Plus, but definitely a fun little perk that often people forget. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, I do think this is such a cute attraction. It is trackless technology, the same ride style as Rise of the Resistance or Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. No height requirement. And somehow this is the first ride in theme park history dedicated to Mickey and Minnie Mouse, which about time. This attraction is the newest ride in this park and it to me really is amazing. I think it's amazing the technology. I think they're able to do a lot of really cool things while still being a family ride. The song is great. It's absolutely a must do for me on a good Hollywood Studios day. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this attraction as well as Rise of the Resistance and Remy's is the trackless technology does have a lot of downtimes because if anything gets on the track or lack thereof, they have to stop the attraction. So if somebody drops a water bottle or anything else, they have to shut down the whole attraction. It's usually an easy fix, but just know you may end up getting one of those uh, redemption passes for this attraction, just because that's uh, that happens more than other rides. This attraction is just so cute. I love the transition from the real world to the cartoon world. If you pay close attention, the cast members' costumes even change. There's tons of details and Easter eggs on this ride too. So definitely check out that sequence video. Also, I'm usually too distracted by whatever has happened to Goofy to realize that Mickey and Minnie sing about how Peachy King, their day is going. And I'm pretty sure they said King. All right, headed to my final ride of the day, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. This is the fancy ride of this park, meaning again, it's an individual cost to skip the line 
at Rise the Resistance. Today it was $20. Fancy ride cost does vary based on how crowded the park is. It's going to use that surge pricing just like Genie Plus. Typically the least expensive one is either Flight or Passage or Mine Train. Even more so than Guardians or Tron usually Rise is usually the top seller. Now again to purchase a fancy ride it's 7 a.m. for Disney World Resort guests. The time that park opens for non-Disney World Resort guests which does mean if you're not a Disney World Resort guest there's a chance that it could be sold out entirely before you even get the chance to purchase it. Also note that fancy rides operate a little bit differently than Genie Plus which are first come first serve. With fancy rides you're actually going to select a time that you would like to ride the attraction and reserve it for a specific time which also means non-Disney World Resort guests may not get as good of a selection for their fancy rides. But make sure no matter who you are if you're booking a fancy ride that you are sure that is the time that you would like to ride that attraction because there are no modifications. There are no cancellations. It's like purchasing a movie ticket. Once you've purchased it, you're locked into that time on that attraction. So choose wisely. Consider, you know, dining reservations when you're booking your other lightning lanes, where you're going to be, et cetera, et cetera, before you book. Better to have a good idea of that before you want to start booking it because it is pretty competitive right at 7 and right at the time the park opens. Now fancy rides can and often do sell out for the entire day, especially at Rise, Guardians, sometimes Tron, not as frequently at Mine Train and Flight of Passage, but they can come back with some good fiddle faddling. I saw Rise come back a couple times today after it was already sold out, but if you're considering booking the fancy ride, especially if you're here during a busy time of year, you should buy it as soon as possible. Thank you. Star Wars Rise of the Resistance has a 440 inch height requirement and it combines a variety of different ride systems and effects to create what I think is the best Disney attraction in Walt Disney World. It is absolutely incredible. It's gonna put you right in the middle of a battle between the First Order I almost called them the Republic, but that's oh, it's the, I almost called the Resistance the Republic, but that's just more bad guys, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's between the Resistance and the First Order, as you are going to help Poe Dameron and Finn and Rey. And uh, it, I mean, it's amazing. As you can imagine, it's incredibly popular and gets very, very, very long rides, multiple hours on a very regular basis. So I highly recommend purchasing this one. If you don't want to do that, rope drop it, whether you're a resort guest getting in early or not, rope drop is an excellent, excellent way to go. Or to avoid doing any of this, after hours events are a great way to knock out a bunch of attractions without doing any kind of Genie Plus or Lightning Lane. We have a video on that from last year and it was awesome. Rise was literally a walk on. It is a specially ticketed event, but it, it can be a really, really great way to do these parks. That will guide you. Recruits, for your safety, stay seated with seatbelts securely fastened. Keep hands, arms, feet and legs inside the transport and supervise your children. A probe droid. Make these two droids anyway. The prisoners have escaped. How brave. <laughs> That attraction gets me every time between the music and the set. Like, it's so good. Also, something happened I'd never seen before. I've seen when Kylo Ren is not feeling himself towards the end and he ends up in a spaceship outside instead of on the ship. But what I have never experienced, which was really, really cool, and, I've, and I know other attractions do this, is that if there's like a little bit of off timing from the vehicles, which we had a couple of times, where normally we would have kept going, but our vehicle stopped for whatever reason, 
they actually made story plot out of it. So at one point we were stopped and Lieutenant Bet came on and was like, they cut the power, they cut the batteries to your vehicles. The First Order knows where you are. You need to fix that battery. And the droid starts talking back and forth with Lieutenant Beck. And then again, after our drop, we got stuck in there, like the doors didn't open right away. So Finn started talking to the droid. It was like, why are the doors always stuck? Which is a funny Star Wars joke. And also he's like, you need to figure out how to open up those doors. And I, the droid's going back and forth with Finn. So I thought it was really cool. I've seen him do it on Smuggler's Run, that for whatever reason, the timing was off on my vehicle. Maybe there was another vehicle that was like slow to load in front of mine or something, but the vehicles for safety reasons have to be spaced out enough. And for whatever reason, the timing of my vehicle is off, but I got enhanced story, which was really cool. And now I'm geeking out because it's like, how many times have I ridden that ride and never experienced that? And like, how lucky am I that I come to these parks all the time? And yet today I've had two brand new, but like very, very cool experiences. Also, because of my little bit of a delay, the timing actually worked better for the Lieutenant Beck is missing plot at the end, which a lot of people don't catch on to. If you listen, Finn is worried about Lieutenant Beck and uh, they haven't, they quote, haven't seen him yet. And then he appears at the end in front of you. And it's a really cool moment that like gives me chills because um, if you get the extended version, which I have heard before, Finn will be like, he's the backbone of the operation. What do you mean there's wreckage? And then Lieutenant Beck's like, I'm here, I'm safe. And it's like this very like, we all made it kind of like heroic team moment. I love it. Well, I think we're going to end it with the best. How can we not? Rise of the Resistance, so, so amazing. Absolutely worth the fancy ride, in my opinion. You got to do it, Star Wars fan or not. It's incredible. So as far as Genie Plus goes, I could have booked another one at three. That would have been the next end of 120 minute cool down period. And then I would have probably just been no longer using the 120 minute rule. I just would have been riding whatever, probably Toy Story Mania, and then booking something else and doing that and so on and so forth. I didn't do that because I didn't think it was necessary for the purpose of explaining things in the video. I don't want to take any spots from anyone else. But that truly is the best way to use Genie Plus. Either be stacking for later, consistently every two hours, or as soon as you tap into something, book something else. If it's not right away, fill in with those filler attractions and entertainment and dining. And then of course, also consider which parks you're going to and your fancy rides. Also just a general note that at the time you see this, there are no longer park hopper restrictions. So park hopping is no longer just after 2 p.m. anytime park hop. So therefore there were some weird caveats with Genie Plus that were due to that park hopping limit. So those are gone, which actually makes Genie Plus a little bit easier. There's also no park reservations for date-based tickets. Also the dining plan came back, which we have a video about. And speaking of other videos, I also did a series where I went to each park and got as many lightning lanes as I could in that park. And that series is great if you want a closer look at each park individually and each attraction individually, because I gave out lots of tips like use Genie Plus here, don't use Genie Plus here. Again, those are like fun game style videos, um, not how I would actually recommend using the system, but very, very helpful tips amongst those if you'd like to take a look. Additionally, Disney said last year that there were big changes coming to Genie Plus, possibly involving some pre-planning aspects, which would be possibly more like FastPass Plus. Obviously when those changes are announced and rolled out, we will do another Genie Plus guide. I know this system is incredibly, incredibly confusing. However, I think once you get the hang of it, it really can help out your park day, especially at a park like this or Magic Kingdom where there's so many great attractions and often those lines are 60 plus minutes. So before we wrap up officially today, let's recap a couple of those best tips. Number one, always have a Genie Plus Lightning Lane. Make sure you book as soon as you can at 7 a.m. and then keep booking them, whether it be once you've done that attraction or if you're playing into that 120 minute rule, make sure you always have one booked as soon as possible. Number two, modify then to adapt it to your schedule. So make sure you book something and then go modify it. Fiddle faddle, refresh, refresh, refresh. Try to get another ride or another time if it's not available. But fiddle faddling and modifying really are the way to maximize the system because you are getting more of what you want as opposed to what the system is just doling out to you. Number three, if you are using that 120 minute rule, make sure to set an alarm for whatever time you can book your next lightning lane. That way you always have one as soon as possible. Number four, if you 
you are a rope dropper, try to make sure none of your lightning lanes are within the first hour or two because that's when the wait times are low anyway. So it's better to book something a little bit further out using that 120 minute rule if available and then rope drop and knock out a bunch of stuff in the meantime. I'm actually gonna do a rope drop series where I rope drop the different parks and see how much I can get done in the first couple hours of the park being open and some strategies there. So stay tuned. Number, I forget at this point, stacking can be one of the best ways to use this system. If you wanna have a luxurious morning, if you wanna sleep in, it's your check-in day, a pool day, a springs day, you're starting at a park like Animal Kingdom that doesn't need as many lightning lanes, stack using that 120 minute rule and walk into the park with a beautiful ready set itinerary of fun. Note that not everybody in the party has to do the same attraction. You can book it for one person, two people, half the party, not all of the party. You can modify it if one person changes their mind. You can take just that one person off of it. So make sure if you do have to cancel or modify something that you're doing it for just the people that need to be canceled or modified. But that's a great one to use if you've got like older kids that want to do more thrilling rides and then mom and ki younger kids want to do more family rides. You can split up and do different things. Number something, make sure you know what attraction you're going to book right at 7 a.m. and use that personalized itinerary under the My Genie Day thing to pin the top attraction you want to the very top of the board so that it's easy to pick it right at 7 a.m. Then throughout the rest of the day, make sure you're editing your selection so that the things you actually want to do are right on top. I like to unselect things after I've already done them. Make sure if you get one of those experience redemption passes because your attraction goes down that you book another lightning lane and check that experience redemption pass to see where it is eligible because it may be eligible at a better ride than you had already booked and then you could just rebook the ride that you had initially and have a better attraction experience but make sure you always rebook if you get one of those. And last but certainly not least I'm really hammering this one home because I've already mentioned it twice in this video. The best way to use this system is to not only use this system use Genie Plus Lightning Lanes, use Fancy Rides, but also use Standby. Know where your filler attractions are. Book your Genie Plus Lightning Lanes. Fiddle faddle if you want it to be a little bit closer, but don't waste so much time on your phone like I did earlier today. In between those Lightning Lanes, that is a great time to do shows and parades and entertainment and characters and dining and all of those filler attractions I told you earlier. So yes, you are gonna be on your phone trying to figure out the system, but once you do have it figured out, for the most part, you can lock in your next attraction, go enjoy yourself in the park, do that attraction and do the next one and so on and so forth. But ultimately using a mix of Genie Plus and Standby and everything else is the best way to use the system. Whew. Well, that was a lot of information. Hopefully this was interesting. I know a lot of you have heard me explain all of this before. So hopefully it was a good refresher as we head into the new year. And we had some real extra fun today, especially thanks to Alexa over at Tower of Terror. So I hope you enjoyed that special surprise as much as I did. I will not soon forget it. Let me know what other kinds of content you want to see down in the comments. Is there a fun genie challenge you can think of, a fun park hopper challenge that you can think of. Let us know all of that down below. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media, come hang out with the Mam Fam in Discord. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it has been truly so magical. Good night.